I figured it's about time for an update. Um, <clears throat> things have uh, been rolling along with the boat. Uh, you know, just here and there, I get time to work on it. Uh, usually, it's only about an hour, or two hours at a time, and it's just like little stuff here and there. So it's really not worth videoing until I get it done because it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you mix up some pookie, you glue something in. Uh, a lot of sanding. I got the whole deck sanded. Uh, it's ready for gel, co gel coat. Uh, what I've been working on is battery trays, trim pump trays, interior mounting positions, you know, all the stupid stuff that you got to put together. Uh, you know, it's the details, the little stuff that's going to kill you. Um, so, and I've also got a lot of parts in. I've been ordering, 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 spending money like it grows on trees. Uh, I got lots of stuff in. I think I've got everything in place now to finish this all up. It's just a matter of getting time. And uh, let me show you what all we got as far as goodies and what's been done so far. Here is the stuff for rebuilding the the uh, transom or the, the gimbal housing. This is that little seal I was telling you about. And this is the new bushing. And another little stainless steel washer that goes up on top. And this is the new steering. I'll show you the difference. Look at that. Big difference, huh? So yeah, it's ready to go in. It uh, won't ever rust again. We won't have a problem. And that's from uh, jrmarine.com. It's a couple hundred bucks or something like that. I forget what it was. The OEM one is uh, $358. So ain't cheap whatsoever. Also, you always want to replace your U-bolt. So they got a new U-bolt with new uh, New bolts down in there. Try to see what else he got in here. He sent me all kinds of good stuff. There's his uh, quality repairs that save you big money. Yeah, Ron is the guy you want to talk to there. He actually answers his uh, his cell phone. Oh, look at this. This is all the stuff he does. So yeah, he fixes gimbal rings also. He'll re-weld them for you, I think, for uh, about 250 bucks. He's got, he does all kinds of stuff. Oh, he does the uh, prop shafts. Wow, it does all kinds of stuff. But anyway, that's uh, what I got so far. Um, I've also got new anodes. I went with sinks, zinc in anodes because we're going to be in uh, fresh water. Uh, got here's my etching primer. I'm just using the Rust-Oleum self etching. It's the same uh, formula as the uh, other stuff. Um, this is a new bellows. We got a new gimbal bearing. Got new water hose install kit we got the little inserts that go inside the water hose I, I know I'm blowing through this right now but you're gonna see me put it all together I'm just kind of going through what we got and this is the install tool that actually installs this aluminum ring Let's see if I can get it out right now whenever you get it inside the bell housing so it pounds that into place gosh I got a uh, new shift cable new lower shift cable this is the extreme version which is the better of it it slides better when I took this shift cable out of my gim the little brass adjustment ferrule does not turn. It's completely shot, so I got to spend another $100 on that junk. Let me see what else we got here. Oh, there's my fuel vent hose. Uh, of course, ooh, there's the... I just love looking at that coarse exhaust. Got my two battery mounts. Uh, got me a transom cinder kit. Complete new transom cinder kit. Uh, oh, the switch for the... Uh, exhaust turn it on and off yeah, i know i've got other stuff i've got that whole pink bucket over there full of new stuff uh gosh we got it all so i know what you guys are saying is jay well let's put it all together let's make it work so we'll get to that i'll go in there and show you in the boat what i've done so far as far as uh, uh interior wise all right you can see that i've sanded down the deck uh it's ready to take gel coat we got all the seams nice and feathered out um, I've actually made a lip that goes underneath the ski locker for that aluminum to sit on it's over on the side of the house curing right now but let me back up a little bit here and show you okay so that's the piece that fits in the back all right it's one big piece and the engine housing or the belt the, the engine box goes around right here and then it tilts forward now I'm not going to screw that in the deck I'm actually going to find latches that will allow me to latch it to this piece right here. So that way when I want it to come off, sort of like an old van, 
That way you can just unlatch it, slide it forward if you need to, versus having to screw it in the deck and tilt it forward. I guess I can do that if I, you know worst comes to worst, but I really, really want to try to avoid that. Okay, so here's uh, one of the little dilemmas is that I have is where I gotta gotta figure out is that the rear seat sits on top of this or it sits up in here to create a sun deck. This seems awfully flimsy for somebody to be sitting on, so I've got to come up with a way to make that a lot uh, sturdier, which I think the way it works is it ties into the speaker housing and then the back of the speaker housing ties into here. Just gotta make sure I get that done correctly. So that brings me on to, look down in there. You can see there are my dual battery mounts. Uh, I took three quarter inch pl uh, plywood and I, uh, I forget how big it was. Uh, the three quarter inch, if you wanna do a 45 inch angle, which is what that is, um, I just didn't think the formula is what I did. Um, because it's three quarter inch uh, ply, you want to go one inch out in order to make sure that that angle comes back to the right spot and you don't go underneath your your mounting area. So you see that I've got one there, I've got the mounting over in the, over in the garage, but this shows you where this is going to sit and how close they are in relation to each other. This was a really, really tight fit. Underneath each one of those little brackets right there, I'm going to put a piece of wood and we're going to glass those down too and then we'll move the brackets up and that allow us to screw to a sacrificial piece or a, a bedding material so we're not screwing into the deck. And I'm gonna glue the battery boxes down. So that gives us our dual batteries and it gives us plenty of room for the coarse exhaust to slide right through this back spot. Now, I'm gonna still have to cut some of this factory original piece right here. And uh, I may end up remaking that. I mean, it seems like it's in pretty good shape. I'm gonna have to recoat it with gel but I'm gonna have to cut a pretty good little archway out of it right there to allow for the, the Corsa to go through. But uh, other than that, oh, here's the uh, trim, trim pump mount, which is over here, and it's going to face backwards, so the trim wires will come around here and attach to the trim pump there. I will have to extend the, uh, the relay actuating wires for the uh, trim, trim pump, but that's no big deal. So that's where I am so far. I'm gonna take all this stuff out. I've already marked them with blue marker here. So I'm happy with their, their location. I'm gonna pull them out, mix up some peanut butter, and glue them down. Um, somebody asked me the other day uh, why I use peanut butter to glue stuff instead of PO glue. Um, where did I use it? Oh, for the engine mounts. Well, to be honest with you, uh, I like the, uh, the peanut butter a lot better. Uh, it seems to hold, it, first of all, it dries faster. Uh, it dries, uh, you know, it, it's, it bonds to itself pretty good. So if you've coated your wood with uh, and let it soak in with resin or polyester, uh, it bonds really good to it. Um, you don't really get your strength from the actual glue itself. You get your strength from the fiberglass um, that's tabbed in and wrapped over and, of course, bubble free. Um, you don't really get it from the glue itself. Um, PL glue works great for doing stringers and if you need to have extended working time. Um, the bad thing, the drawback with peanut butter is that you have, what, 20 minutes to work with it in perfect conditions? And we've all seen that I'm only getting about 10 minutes of working time. So if you were trying to put a stringer down with all peanut butter, you'd have to really, really retard their curing, so therefore you'd have enough time to mess with it. But uh, all the boating manufacturers use a, a type of thickened resin to actually install most of their stuff. They don't use PL glue. Uh, PL glue just gives you that extra working time, and there's nothing wrong with it. I used it on my stringers because I needed that extra working time. So uh, that's my that's why I use peanut butter with a lot of stuff, mainly because of the speed. It enables you to get it done really, really quickly. Uh, you got 20 minutes of curing time and you can throw glass right over it. You can even throw it right over it when it's wet because it's gonna all cure together. So that's my answer with that. Yes, I know epoxy is probably stronger. I know polyester doesn't stick to itself, to stick to many things well, but you know what? It works perfectly fine for these boats. And uh, if you prep correctly and sand correctly, it will stick fine. So that's my soapbox for right now. So I'm gonna get back to work. Talk to you later. Guys, I think we're really close to gel coat. Uh, as you can see, I got the two battery mounts in and glassed in along with the little bedding material for the uh, interior parts to screw to. Um, trim pump is glassed in. What I did is I took you know all the pieces that I need to make and uh, peanut buttered them in and then I made a little kind of filled it around them so that way you're not trying to you know create a 90 degree turn. And then once it was all dry I just kind of sanded them rounded the edges with my DA grinder. 
and uh, VA sander, I should say. And uh, then I took one layer of chop strand, and laid it over, and uh, wet it out, tapped out all the air bubbles. All you need is one to go over this. this we're not trying to go for uh, super strength, uh, but it is uh, very nice, very strong for what it needs to be. Uh, I test fit the batteries, make sure they're gonna fit. So I'm happy. I also did, I put the uh, ski locker pieces of wood, the lips on there. Uh, so I can get this out and show you what I mean. You see how that is? I just took a piece of wood and uh, slathered it in resin really good, let it soak in, then I uh, glued it into place and held it in with my, my uh, clamps. And this allows, it keeps the, uh, the ski locker from ro rotating in on itself. This lip right here sits on that piece. So now all I need to do is put the gel coat down and then uh, this thing can be screwed in. That's the bad thing, is it? Uh, is that uh, this piece has to be screwed in horizontally into the deck, uh, which really sucks. Uh, I'm nervous about that. I don't like that. I've been trying to come up with a good idea. I thought about just using 5200 and then taking off the the uh, the hinge part of this uh, door that opens up and just have this thing just sit in here instead of opening up. And then what we'll do is we'll do 5200 all the way around it and then put a whole bunch of weight down on it to hold it from moving. I don't know. It's a thought. I may try that first uh, and then if it, it pops up during the, if it becomes a pain in the butt, we'll screw it in the deck. Uh, our goal was no screws in the deck and we're going to be breaking our own rule right there. So anyway, uh, that's where I am right now. Uh, I'm done for the night. Oh, let me show you another thing I did. You see the three weep holes? I did that on each side, shoved a bunch of resin in there and then we'll put gel coat in there also. And I also did it for the, uh, the seat boxes up at front because we got a really big rainstorm the other day and this, the front cover leaked and it dang near filled up that front box. So I was like, you know what, ah, that's not, that's too much of a risk. So I created uh, two holes there, drains into the little storage compartment, and then three holes here. Um, so and I'll, then I'm gonna get this, um, it's called dry deck, and it's a rubber mat that actually has stilts that keeps the rubber mat up off the, the, the deck itself. Let's water flow underneath it, but all the stuff you sit on top of it isn't gonna hurt it. So anyway, <clears throat> I would say we're gonna be gel coating the uh, next couple of days. Um, I do want to put a, a little bit more tabbing on the, the engine mounts. Uh, I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but I'm going to tab into the stringers and tag into the hull uh, with one more layer just to be sure. And I'm going to come out a little further with it just to give it a nice uh, final coat. And uh, then we are ready for complete reassembly. Still got to finish the gimbal. That's just a matter of coat of, a coat of paint. So until next time, guys.